Ask any Scot and they'll proudly proclaim that we were never conquered. When Rome colonised the known world, somehow Scotland withstood that mighty empire. But how? If you're interested in the people, places and events in Scottish history, then click the subscribe button at the bottom right of the screen. In the meantime, let me tell you a story. In the video that I made about Hadrian's Wall, I quipped that it was there to keep the English in. And I was a wee bit taken aback by the number of folk who felt the need to say that Scotland and England didn't exist when Hadrian built his wall. You can imagine my surprise at that turn of events. What? Are you trying to tell me that Scotland is not an immutable, incorruptible nation-state preformed in the singularity that preceded the Big Bang? That as the universe expanded, the process of cosmic inflation wasn't just an English attempt to take over its prosperous, more inventive, progressive, resource-rich neighbour to the north? North being something that Scots would have to invent in the future, obviously. Are you trying to sell me that? Don't give me that, bollocks. Do you think the irony will be lost? Whether or not Scotland always existed and what you think it was goes a long way to deciding whether or not you think it was ever conquered. The thing is that whilst we know that Scotland's always been here, the Romans didn't. In their folly, the Romans tried to subdue us. More than once. What's now Scotland was neither established nor homogeneous. There were multiple tribal groups. Votadini, Selgovi, Novanti, Damnoni, Veniconis, if that's how you pronounce it. And who knows how much the Romans who wrote these names even really understood the relationships. People lived in different types of places. Some lived in roundhouses on land. Some lived in crannogs on the water. Some lived in brochs. Oh, now, whilst we're on the subject of brochs, in a couple of weeks' time, I'm going to Shetland to make a video about the most fantastic and best preserved of all our brochs. Whilst I'm there, I'm going to meet up with our local Shetland experts, Chris Dyer and Laurie Goodlad. Our conversation will be on my Patreon member page. So if you're a Patreon member and you've got any questions about Shetland and its history, archaeology or culture, then send them in and I'll put them to these two top tour guide, writer, historian, native breed farming museum people. If you're not already a Patreon member, then why not think about joining up? Here's the thing. There's going to be a soaring drone shot in a minute. Without Patreon members, that wouldn't happen. The professional videographer holding that camera and a thousand other things only happen because of the support of patrons. So a huge thanks to them on everyone's behalf. And if you fancy getting access to extra videos, supporting the channel and having all your videos advert free, then why not click the tab at the top right to become a patron. Now I live around three to four miles from the best preserved Roman fort earthworks in Britain. It's one of the many privileges of living in Perthshire. But what would these Romans have looked like from a Scottish point of view? From the time that legionaries set foot on the south coast of what would become Britannia, people had to make hard choices. They knew all about Rome. They knew about the military killing machine that was the Roman army. A hundred years before, Julius Caesar had come, saw and conquered, before buggering off back to be Caesar. People on this island knew that nobody had withstood the might of Rome and that those who tried were enslaved or dead. So what are you going to do? Some will resist because that's what free people do. Some will cooperate because common sense tells you that everywhere the Romans have gone, they've shaped the very landscape. For hundreds of years, they've changed the terrain to suit their will. 
Some say that 2,000 years from now their presence will still be etched into the countryside. Everyone has been crushed. What makes you think that you will be any different? So let's think about Talarg. It's 86 AD. He's a Caledonian warrior who came to this place after it had been deserted by Romans. Can you imagine the elation? Three years ago, the most powerful empire in the world invaded, just like they'd invaded everywhere. When they arrived, it was like nothing you'd ever seen in your life before. Tens of thousands of men, more than you'd ever thought possible, arrived from the south. But unlike everywhere else, where they took over as soon after they arrived, now they've turned back south. Oh, the celebrations, the all-night parties, the dancing in the streets. Because the Romans did leave streets. One road went to the south of the fort along the Allen Valley here. In fact, there was a road connecting a whole line of forts and watchtowers that they built looking north towards the hills and up the mouth of each glen. This line of forts was called the Gask Ridge. Forget Hadrian's Wall, the Antonine Wall. This was the first frontier the Romans built across Britannia. Now it's the venue for your well-deserved Liberation Street Party. I'm Talark. I've seen many summers and survived. I survived the Battle of Mons Graupius a few years ago. We'd had some time to prepare for that. We knew the Romans were coming. They'd landed in the very south around the time that I was born. Everyone knew. It was only a matter of time before they reached us. The Orkney chiefs even travelled all the way down to Colchester to submit to Roman power back then, without even putting up a fight. Who gives in without a fight? And I know it's true the Romans have slaughtered everyone who stood against them. Men, women, children. And they call us barbarians. Every time an army took to the field against them, the Romans paid back with slaughter. They don't even fight like warriors, man and man. They fight like, like, like machines, cogs and wheels. They even fire great bolts and boulders from afar off using actual machines. Where's the honour in that? As the Romans came north, we learned from the warriors further south, pitched battles were dangerous. Some who could have done battle now fight for Rome. They joined the Roman army. 25 years, a pension and a farm. In return for what? Fighting for Rome in some far off land? Then in the year 68, their mad emperor committed suicide. Nero, I think he was called, I don't know. There were four emperors that year. They were so busy fighting amongst themselves that we thought they'd leave us in peace. Finally, the emperor that he called Vespasian triumphed and he sent us Agricola. I think they call the year 79 when Agricola started to move into what they'll now call Scotland. The Votadini gave in quickly. The Solgovi, they were surrounded and he moved north to the Tay. We harried them. We picked them off. And then in the year 83, vast hordes of the Roman machine swarmed like bees. Drones and workers following their orders. They sting, leaving death without honey. It was like our leader Calgacus said before the Battle of Mons Graupius. They made a desert and called it peace. Many tribes came together behind Calgacus at that Battle of Mons Graupius. When the battle took so many warriors, we made for the hills to fight another day. And we harried them again and hit and ran. They hadn't just built this fort, but a whole line of forts along the strath. There were watchtowers and some forts deeper in our territory, so that every time that we wanted to move, leave the glen, they were watching. Any time we want to cross this line of forts, they want tribute. They say this is the frontier that divides Roman from barbarian. Ha! Barbarians! I say they're gangsters and thieves and we just want to live free. But the mountains were still ours. Now, just a few years later, they run. Ha! 
Some say that they're leaving because men in the Danube River, many days travel and a ship right away, have risen up against them. And they have to take their troops and leave us in peace because we are not subdued. My name's Giram. My granddad Talarcon fought against the Romans at Mons Graupius. He told me about the celebrations when the Romans finally left and returned south. That was more than 40 years ago now. The Romans are still there in the south. They build forts of wood. Further south still, they tell me about forts of stone, bathhouses, temples and towns. Many are servile under them. I mean, don't get me wrong, we trade where we can, but we're not servants. Some are seduced by coins. The soldiers retire and remain. They take land and mix with the people and yet still look down. Some don't know whether they're Britons or Romans. And then, in 117, their Emperor Trajan died. We learn from our forefathers that when one Emperor dies, the next seeks conquest. The new Emperor himself came to these lands in the south. We girded for battle. But instead of conquest, he ordered a wall. A wall? A stone wall from sea to sea. It was incredible. They tell me that it's something that no man can imagine without seeing it. With forts and ramparts and soldiers marching back and forth. People can't visit their family without permission to enter those gates. Farms were taken for land to build these forts. Some now make money from these forts. The harlots, the shoemakers, the publicans. And more Roman soldiers retire. Men who came from far countries are given land that once belonged to the people of this island. But the wall's a long way from here. Even when the Roman soldiers do tread north of the wall, we seldom see them. And that's fine by me. My name's Urida. It's 170 years since the birth of the person that some call the Christ. It's almost 50 years since they built the wall for Emperor Hadrian in my granddad Giram's lifetime. For years after that, things were peaceful. We got on with life, farming, feasting, and occasionally nicking our neighbour's cattle. Life was good. My granddad was still alive when their Emperor Hadrian died and they replaced him with Antoninus Pius. And my father said that Antoninus wasn't a military man, so there'd be no more invasions. In fact, things got worse. It was almost as if he had to prove himself. You know that wee man syndrome? I mean, I don't know how big he was. He's never been here, I've never seen him, but you know what I'm talking about. He sent some guy, Urbicus. I don't know much about him. All I know, is that the Romans invaded again and they killed my uncle and my father. And then they built this wall. There's not much left of it now because it was mostly made of turf with stone blocks at its base and a wooden palisade and ramparts on top. When they told me about the wall that the Emperor Hadrian had built, I could hardly believe it. But then they came north to us and built this wall. It runs from the Forth to the Clyde. In front of the wall, there was this ditch that's here. It was filled with all sorts of prickly bushes, spikes and all sorts of other things. And if you attacked, it would cut you down before you got anywhere near the wall. I was too young to avenge my father then. But my mother brought me up to be strong. We harried them. And the people south of the wall harried them as well just like my grandfather's grandfather, Talarkin, had. That was generations ago. In bitter, brutal revenge, they slaughtered the Navanti people of Galloway. They couldn't escape south because of the wall that Hadrian had built. They couldn't escape north because of the wall that Antoninus had built. So we learned to cooperate with each other, with other tribes. I grew into a warrior. And now they have abandoned their wall and we have won. A thousand years from now, 
All that will be left here will be trees in a ditch and the Romans will be forgotten. You're probably wondering who I am. Keltrum, they call me. You might have heard of my granddad, Uradich. He fought the Romans who built that wall for Antoninus. His granddad, Giram, fought the Romans who built the wall for Hadrian. His granddad before him fought the Romans at Mons Graupius, the ones who built the forts on the Gask Ridge. My generation, we've just been through the most brutal Roman invasion yet. Okay, so I admit it, we were raiding and attacking Roman positions, but God knows how much they've invaded us and how many times. It's like the words passed down from my ancestor Talcan. The words called Gacchus spoke at Mons Graupius. They made a desert and called it peace. Now, nobody even remembers where Mons Graupius was. Some say it never happened. <laughs> that if it had, there would have been evidence. Lost spears, broken chariots. But I've heard that that's what Kilgakis said. And, well, all I'm saying is that the Romans can hardly complain that we raid when they invaded us. Of course, now the people in the south call themselves Romano-British. And the women have married retired Roman soldiers. Once proud Britons wear togas and go to the bathhouse and leave behind the ways of the gods and their ancestors. So yes, we raid. And in reply, the African emperor of Rome, Septimius Severus, came north with such a force as has never been seen in these lands. The fighting has been more brutal than ever. The reprisals more vicious than even Romans would normally stomach. But the spirits were on our side. Even as they were about to descend in the hordes of machine-engineered murderous efficiency, Septimius Severus was taken to York, where he died. His son Caracallus made peace, and there's silver to share. We are still here. Again and again the Romans have come. Again and again they've retreated, leaving many dead in their wake, but not their lifestyle. They tell me that away to the south, they have great farm buildings and bathhouses. The retired Roman soldiers live in towns and run affairs. Here, less has changed. It still rains, but we've become stronger. Tribes have come together as one people. The Romans now call us Picts. Painted people, they say. Although we're no more tattooed than they are, in truth. We are the Picts. Little may they realise it, but it's the Romans that made us strong. Because of them, we were forged into a nation. If you want to know more about us, then click the link coming up on screen now. In the meantime, Hamian Doch is going to be a lamb, Ali. Sherry and Drastan.